Alrighty. Just down there here, checking me pond out in the near darkness. Um, there's a bat flying around too. There he is. Just seen there. Um, he's obviously going around looking for a bit of uh, flying insects. Um, anyway, I just want to talk about uh, another video, a second video on how low can you go. Uh, and there's something I forgot to mention about the Burmese refugees, uh, and that is that a lot of them forage, and they've been driving along with friends of my parents, um, and all of a sudden they're, whoa, 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 stop the car, stop the car. And what they'll do is they'll be like Charlotte Mustard or something, and, you know, they'll stop the car, they'll get out. Next thing they've got these blooming shopping bags, plastic shopping bags they're pulling out, and they'll go and get all this uh, Charlotte Mustard, whack it in the bags, take it home and cook it. Um, which kind of surprises me because the... <laughs> the climate and, and all that and the plants that grow in Burma are so different from what grows here in Australia. Um, but they've worked that out. Um, now, uh, the other thing they do, because they save all this money, in that, they over here, when you get welfare, something like 95% of the time, or 90% of the time at least, um, it'll be in money, in cash. Uh, there's only cases where things have gone a bit awry with someone and they'll tell you, no, you're going to have it in a card, which is essentially like a bridge card or a food stamp sort of a system, uh, but you still get one third of it in money. Uh, but anyway, they get normal cash. And what they do is they go and buy a car with it and they'll save up amongst all each other and then bang, they go buy something big. And sometimes they go out and sort of go bang and buy themselves a 60-inch blooming plasma screen TV. Uh, you go into the house, they reckon there's bugger all in the house, almost no furniture, and then in the corner, whomp, there's this massive TV, <laughs> um, brand new. And, yeah, that's the way they go. But there's also people over here called uh, Freegans. And these people squat in often sort of office block buildings or multi-storey large buildings, and there'll be like an illegal dispute that's been going for, you know, seven years, ten years, about the ownership of the place, saying that one of the owners might have died, or there'll be some sort of a legal dispute. And the building sits there vacant with no one able to rent it as a result um, of caveats and that being placed on the building. Uh, so what they do is they go and move in, and it's not very hard to get power connected here at all. Like, in terms of identity needed, it's just zilch, you more or less just go and say your name and they'll hook it up. Um, so they go in and get the power reconnected, um, and then they live in it. Um, and they'll do that. And they'll also go dumpster diving at the same time. Um, and they're referred to as freegans because some of them are vegetarians uh, because they don't like the idea of buying meat with the idea that that's going to, you know, put up the amount of animals slaughtered. Uh, but when it's in a dumpster, it was going to landfill anyway. So they don't feel so bad about grabbing it out and eating it because it's good protein that was going to get buried in the ground anyway. Um, but in the, those cases, uh, a lot of them are university students and they'll sort of take in uh, the money that is you know, provided for you when you're a student um, and spend that on tech stuff. And they've got like, you know, the best blooming laptops and iPads and iPhones and this is and that and all the good tech stuff. Um, because they've got plenty of money left over. Um, and they usually pick a floor and then just sort of, you know, separate segments of it off if there's any partitioning left from old offices or whatever. Curtains that are sort of made up with bits of rope and whatnot. And, you know, set up little rooms for themselves in there. Um, yeah, but I don't really advocate squatting. Um, but I think your best option... Uh, he's probably van dwelling. That's a very good option. Um, and, you know, there's another thing that I, I should mention. Uh, my father worked with someone, uh, and he'd recently gone through a divorce, and he was basically left with nothing. Um, you know, as you may have experienced yourself. Uh, and what happened with him is he was working at the same place my dad was working at, so he was making a bit of money 
Um, but as for rent, there was some people he'd met or come across or whatever um, who had recently bought um, a few acres and it was pretty run down. And of course they needed new fencing put up for sheep, they needed you know, some dead trees cut out the way, they needed firewood cut, um, you know, they needed holes dug for the corner posts on the new fencing um, and things like that. And of course this bloke could do all that. And they also had a large machinery shed with one section sort of, you know, off, uh, like, you know, closed in, closed off uh, with a little door there. And yeah, he ended up renting that from them. But they didn't do a deal in regards to money. They'd done a deal in regards to hours of labour. One week's labour, I mean, uh, one week's rent equals a certain amount of hours of labour. And that's the deal that they struck, and it worked for both parties. Uh, they got their place fixed up in a lot quicker time, and he had a place to live for, you know, six months or more. Um, I remember he was uh, talking to my father about a wood heater he was building um, to be able to keep that area that he was living in the shed uh, warm at night. Um, but it, that sort of struck me as one that I should bring up because it was a deal that allowed him to live in a place that wasn't a van, it was actually like a decent sized room um, and you know he had the power, I think he had the power connected there, I'm not too sure. Um, what I do know is that it was all done without money being involved um, and under situations where you're tight for money that would probably suit you. Um, but yeah, a lot of these things I think you've got to break down into sort of finite terms, what do you need? And I forget what the old thing is about water, food, shelter, warmth and love. Well, basically, yeah, there's one that I questioned on that list. Um, but anyway, the um, the thing with water, I can tell you for a fact, uh, when it comes to washing your hands and doing cooking and drinking water, you'll use about 10 gallons a week. Now, that'll kick up slightly higher um, with any shower system. Now often these shower systems you buy they will say on them what water they take. Furthermore you can use your mobile phone or your wristwatch to time a minute and then a bucket that's got like the, a lot of the buckets over here they've got it marked on the side uh, how many litres they are. So you hold it under the, you know, you set up your shower rig, get it running, hold it under there for a certain amount of minutes that you expect, uh, like just for one minute uh, and then measure the amount of water that was there for one minute and then times that by the amount of minutes you were in the shower, times by seven days a week, and you know, you'll get an idea of how much water you'll take for washing. Uh, uh, washing yourself, I mean, like for showers, washing. Um, and then clothes washing, my gosh, it is astronomical, the amount of water you take. Um, but, you know, the idea of stealth camping is, you know, one idea, uh, but it may be beneficial for you to be able to rent a bit of area or room off a farmer, you know, and it can go further. He may even allow you to, you know, chop off, I don't know, another area the size of a, of a few cars for yourself to, you know, be able to grow a few veggies or, you know, he, he may be able to um, roll in a bit of, of you know, eggs or or some other sort of thing um, that, you know, you can sort of roll into the deal with the rent um, in terms of, you know, doing it for labour. Um, but, you know, once you get your warmth sorted, uh, that's one of the big things, and, and a place to be able to wash yourself, um, you know, and, and things like that, uh, basic cooking uh, and things like that. A lot of things may take a lot longer than they will when you're on grid uh, or even when you've got money and you're using propane and you're off grid like me it may take a lot longer to do some of these things uh, but if there's no work out there and what work you can get is only a few hours a day or a day or two a week I don't think it really matters that much um, because you are got the time to be able to do something that takes longer but costs less to do it um, 
So, yeah, um, there'll be other videos in this series, and I've got to think of some good bits and pieces. I've got a few ideas up that I uh, will talk about in a third video.